Hey friends, Lucian here with the Bullish Bears team making the watch list video for tomorrow, Thursday, October 5th. Uh, let's go here today and take a look at some of the alerts that triggered. Uh, again, these alerts, they're looking for either breakouts or breakdowns um, on a daily chart. Uh, the alerts, again, are not buy uh, recommendations. They are key areas of uh, breakouts for... Uh, you know, potential a breakout or a breakdown that you want to take a look at. So these are, <coughs> excuse me, ones that triggered today. Um, and you'll see, I think there was at least one, if not a couple, that moved really nicely. Um, you'll see MTBC. That was one I just missed at the open. Um, you'll see, let's take a look at, wow, many of them finished uh, red on the day. Um, but you'll see, um, uh, let's start with, TLRA at or above 470. I wasn't even really watching that one much today. I was really focused in on um, MTBC today, um, but you will see, <coughs> excuse me, with um, TLRA at or above 470, you'll see it kind of went up, kind of bull flagged, and you'll see right here uh, around 4... 470 was right on this candlestick here. So you could have went over on the one minute and waited for it right over here, right when it broke here. And it went up to 488 today. Uh, would have been kind of a tricky one to stay in for long term. Um, but obviously it went up to 488, kind of just basically traded sideways. Uh, you could have gotten a little bit. It, was, it would have been a little bit too messy to... <clears throat> to trade that one here today because it was a little bit too much consolidation to the side. Um, but MTBC was the one at or above 329. Uh, take a look at this one. This one went absolutely crazy, and I totally missed it this morning. Um, you'll see right here was where I totally missed it on the one minute. So at or above, was it 320, 329, right? So you'll see, I mean, it opened up above 329. 329 is down here. So <coughs> right away it opened up above it. But you'll see this huge red green candlestick that was from 371 all the way up to 471. And that five-minute uh, candlestick, it went up a dollar. You could have still gotten in if it broke above the high a day here, 471, and it still went up to uh, 544. There was still another dollar move after that five, uh, that dollar move up. But right here... I came down, totally missed that little doji above the nine, and it could have literally just broke, gotten in right on this break. Totally missed it. If I had missed uh, that one, which I did, uh, I could have gotten in over here, and I just totally was spacing out when I was washing it and totally missed it. Uh, after I missed this one here, <clears throat> could have gotten in on this one here and still missed it. So even a break above this candle, 487. Probably would have sold up here over five dollars, five thirty-four. That's a fifty cent move. This one moved like crazy today, um, so totally missed it. TLRA. Let's see if I'm going to keep that on the watch list tomorrow. Yeah, I'll keep that one. MTBC. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep that. I'm just going over some of the plays for today. Just not, just wondering if I'm going to keep something on the watch list for tomorrow. <coughs> no, because it didn't. Didn't really. Sorry for that. Um, that gets really loud. Um, let's take a look at uh, MRNS at or above 689. You'll see this one here. Um, wait, which one was that? At above 689. Yeah, so this one kind of dropped down. You'll see it, it literally probably triggered right at the beginning of the day. Right here. Oh, like right over here, I got it. <clears throat> and then it really did nothing but trade sideways for today. Uh, again, some of these are going to, you'll have one or two. Sorry about that. <laughs> you'll, what the heck is going on? Man, I'm off today. Um, you'll see one or two go really well. And then you have a couple that will go out and they'll, you know, be a five or a ten cent mover. And then some will really do nothing. Um, let's see, V-Ray. At or above 650. Um, let's see what that one did. 
That one didn't do really anything today either, so we'll delete that one. ANTH was at or above $2. You'll see... Again, a little bit of a fake out. That's where something like that, when it gets over $2, a whole dollar amount, you want to see it stay above that. And you'll see it when one candle up, went up to 205 and then came down. <clears throat> so you want to see it close, nice close above a whole or half dollar amount, especially a whole dollar amount. So that one was kind of a little bit of a fake out. CDNA, you'll see at or above 459. What did that one do here today? That one kind of moved up really quickly. You will see, again, many of these you got to be careful. you got to watch them. Sometimes they'll happen right within the first, <coughs> usually within the first half hour, a lot of them, and then they'll go from there. Uh, sometimes they'll pick up a little bit later. But you'll see a green candle close here. Right when it hit, if you got in above the high of this uh, five-minute candle, you'll see that candle was 451 up to 450 or four. 42 up to 457 and if you got in a break of that candle 450 which would have been the 459 uh, went up to 475 before it came back down again uh you know it's a 15 cent move you're looking to get scalps so, you know these are not going to be you know these are small cap companies these are not going to be your buy and hold kind of companies um you know you're day trading them or doing short-term swing trades so if you come down to the <coughs> to the one minute you'll see right when it went went red uh, green to red and then came right above here, right when it closed above, uh, went red to green. You know, you see it went up and kind of faked down this crazy hanging candlestick. But, uh, you know, you could have rode that up a little bit. Still a little bit crazy. Um, yeah, that's why you got to watch the one and the five minute. But you'll see the, the closes was still above the EMAs. Um, and this one was a potential for a 15 cent move. I'm um, not going to keep that on the watch list. ITI, let's take a look at that one. At or above 769. That one. Another one really did not do much today. It went up and just came right back down. <clears throat> so <clears throat> you'll see that kind of hanging candlestick or that hammer up in the air. That's a bear signal. Um, so that would have been not a great move. Uh, e G E L G X. Let's see. That was at or above 596. Um, that one right there went again. Another one just kind of went down. Um, it kind of got you like one candlestick potentially right there, and kind of just went down and went bearish. That's why it's important for. Um, hold on a second. I got a cough. Uh, when you're doing these watch lists, some of them you're going to be scalping up, and then other ones you're just going to go watch it, let a pattern form. And when you get these fake outs, if it just kind of closes above or it doesn't do anything, like close up, you know, you get a five minute candle up and then it kind of reverses, that's when you short on the way back down. Um, so these watch lists, um, you know, I have them to watch going up, but once the pattern forms, you could watch for a reversal. So some of them will just do a scalp up and then again trade it down for a reversal and short it. Um, so that's really, these move up or down every single day. I just put the, the alerts for them to go up just to watch them. Um, but you watch those key breakout areas and if they continue to run and ride above the EMAs, that's a bullish signal. Uh, once they start to reverse, um, you know, they're potential shorts. So ELGX, <clears throat> not going to keep that one on. PXLW, that one was for at or above 543. Let's take a look at that one. Again, another one just went up right here just a little bit and got up to 549 and just kind of collapsed. Again, right below a half dollar amount. So you want to see it break above that 550 marker and you'll see it didn't break above it. Kind of went and then it just kind of went and collapsed. <coughs> so you can see it kind of formed this head and shoulders. Right shoulder, head, right shoulder. So you'll see this right shoulder is right across here. Couldn't break above. You'll see the neckline was... Now right down here, this 4 or 536, you could have kind of called it right down here in this 531 area. Uh, I was watching that, and then I took that short, and you'll see that went from 531, and it stayed below the EMAs all the way down here to $5. That's a, you know, 30, 40 cent move short. And you could just rode it down and with price staying below the EMAs. Uh, so these stocks, they move up or they move down each every day. Um, so these alerts, make sure you're paying attention to them. 
OPTT. That one was uh, at or above 166. You will see that one didn't do anything. So again, if it's not breaking the high, so, <clears throat> so I'm having these for like stocks that break the high of the previous day. If they don't and they don't if they don't go and break above the previous day's highs, you watch the pattern and then you look for support on the daily chart and then you can ride them down to, you know, support areas. You got to watch these patterns and see how they form. Um, again, there's uh, there's the patterns on the daily and then there's the intraday patterns. And to get comfortable, there's no way like I could sit here and do a whole video just all on patterns and everything. And the best way to do it is just honestly, you have to go out there and every single day practice. There's no way other to get around it other than just sheer practice, making hundreds of practice trades in a virtual account and just learning about um, support and resistance and patterns. That's really the best way to get comfortable with day trading. I wish there was an easier way, but that's really, it's the easiest way is the more trades that you make, the more practice that you do, the more comfortable you get as a trader. Um, let's take a look at CLSN. Uh, at or above 612. This one collapsed. So perfect example. This one, you'll see it went all the way up. It went crazy pre-market. And then right at 612, you'll see it just like, it just opened way below that 612. And then it kind of just went around like this. And uh, it kind of went up. So it's still going up. So you can play these even if something is bearish on the day. You can still play it for the scalps in between. But you'll see this thing went collapsed give back all of it but that's what's going to happen but look at this this is no accident right massive green daily candlestick and you'll see at some point that stock is going to give back at least half of its gains where uh, it's either then going to form a flag and continue upwards or it's going to collapse so this is a very very interesting one because this did exactly really what it's supposed to do it went halfway down this candlestick uh, so this one I am actually going to put on the watches for tomorrow because there's going to be some crazy volatility. This thing's either going to collapse or it's going to go forward. But you'll see if this kind of goes up, um, let me see where this area, look at that, no accident, right above that 402 area, it's no accident, right above that whole dollar amount is a very key area. So I want to see it break 402, but just so you know, it gets very, very crazy. Um, hold on, let me just see if I can change that this between this candlestick and the top of that wick up here gets crazy volatile so you got to be careful and watch that um, but this could be a really crazy mover uh, tomorrow um, let me just move this out right here remove that drawing so <clears throat> for it to continue up I'd like to see it break $4 uh, as a potential flag and then you want to see it break this 530 area and then obviously to continue further over that $6 area. But you'll see there's no accident why this happened right halfway down that candlestick where it's either just going to completely collapse. This could easily go right back down to this to this 13 EMA. You just got to watch it. Um, but again, watch it. If it closes below the open and it starts to continue down, this could be a beautiful short. Uh, it's just completely one to just completely watch. And I'm going to put an area there, 369, I'd put that as, you know, I'd like to see it break below that area at or below 369 for a potential short. Put that on here. Um, so there's definitely going to be some volatility with that. So those are the alerts for today. Um, TLR, TLRA still holding its highs. I'm going to remove this, so remove drawing. I'm going to put at or above 488. Uh, let's see here. So again, I would be careful with something like that. It'd make me a little bit nervous, um, you know, if once this hits $5 here, so I'd put resistance right around $5. I'd be careful around that $5 marker. Let's see what that looks like on the weekly. I mean, this thing is just going. I mean, this can go. It's one of those things you just don't know what's going to happen. If it's going to, I'd like to see it break above five dollars. Um, but you know, if you got a position here and you got in at the break of four eighty eight or four eighty nine, and then it goes up to five dollars and five dollars rejects, 
uh, I'd use this 488 uh, as a stop loss and uh, just be careful because this could easily reverse and give give back um, its gains. So, okay, that's TLR, A, CLS, N. By the way, here's a tip. I've been getting annoyed in my re recent videos. I always click over here and then I get annoyed a lot of times, a lot of my stocks uh, like remove from my watch list. As you can see, this is an editable area. So whoever's watching my watch list videos and posted a comment as to how to overcome this, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for your advice because they said if you click over here, it's not editable. So you see it's not editing, so it won't remove it from my watch list. So I gotta, I gotta retrain myself to start clicking over here rather than over here. So if you find that happening to you, it's super annoying. Just click over here on last at least or over here uh, and it won't remove it. It's not an editable field, which is awesome. So thank you to whoever recommended that. Uh, so now going into the nightly scan, we will see here stocks between one and $10. <coughs> Minimum 500,000 in volume, 5% 5 gain on the day. We will see there was a potential of 27 plays. I have 100 million uh, for shares outstanding. I put that, it's kind of like kind of like the float. I like stocks to move. Um, I prefer them not to be really slow. Uh, again, it's just all a matter of your preference. So I want stocks that are holding their highs on the day for either a potential breakout or breakdown. This one's kind of trading fat, flat, but it's at a yearly high. It's kind of overextended a little bit. Uh, could pull back. This thing, just look at this thing. I mean, this is, um, so this is either going to continue up. But again, I want to be careful right around that $5 mark. I want to see it break and hold above $5 if I, if I was going to continue to go along with it. Um, but if not, if that thing starts to break down, this could be a nice short. And CLSN, I normally wouldn't put this on the watch list because it's not holding its highs. But if you look at it, you will see um, that uh, this could be a potential nice short. All these lines are kind of in my, like, they make me a little blurry. So ideally, it's this $4 marker. Uh, if it rejects off this $4, again, this could be a really nice short down. Now, if you say, you could say, well, you know, Thinkorswim doesn't have shares to short. I have interactive brokers. Um, let me take a look at that right now and see if they have shares to short. Uh, of them, CLSN, uh, short share, uh, shorting on bid is, uh, uh, so it looks like it's not shortable. I'll have to check tomorrow and just double check. Um, let me see about TLRA, TLRA, that is shortable. So as you can see, TLRA is shortable. Not shortable with Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim's terrible for shorting. Uh, I'm liking Interactive Brokers much more now. Again, I pay about $150 a month for uh, the platform here for DOS. So I use Interactive Brokers and then I use DOS here um, for making my trades, right? So let's take a look over here, RGSE. So that's just a very interesting one, huh? You'll see it's done absolutely nothing. Got a massive amount of volume here today. Let's see. wonder why. There's lots of... Uh, after license deal. So look at that. Goes all the way up with a doji. So now you see these EMAs. This thing's been doing absolutely nothing. Breaks over a dollar here today. Um... I mean, this is a parabolic move. This is a super difficult one to trade. Um, it's like that going up with that doji above. It's, it's This is a very hard one to trade because there's a lot of room between that 235 to that 325. It's just an easy one to get trapped in. Let's try to see if there's any area of like gaps that you could look at. Back here on the daily, I, I just, it's too much of a mess. I don't want to get you guys trapped in that one. But look at that. It's just so, it's so hard to trade that after a move. I'd like to see it, you know, at, it's at such a weird close. If it breaks above 250, I mean, there's that room up here. So I, I'm just I'm not going to put on the watch list. STRM, that one is going on the watch list right at the end of the day. Look at that. Over here, boom, rush of volume. I want to see that right above that 282 marker. Perfect. So, 
I am going to put alert at or above 282. Massive rush of volume. Must have been some news. Yeah, it looks like there was at the end of the day. So that's great. Lots of volume. Lots of news. Holding its highs. It is kind of selling off uh, in the aftermarket. Uh, but that's okay. I'm just going to watch this and see for tomorrow. STRM. Now let me take a look. Make sure it's not a garbage five cent mover. STRN five cent spread. Perfect. Yep. And look at uh, shares are shortable within uh, interactive brokers. I don't think they are with uh, TD. VHC another one. Oh wow, almost identical. Look at that. Beautiful. Perfect. Um, so let me just double check over here. VHC. Ah. Of course, it's too good to be true. See that where it's S dot five C. It says uh, five cent increments. That's a five cent spread stock. I just do not like them, and I will not trade them. So I would have put this on my watch list, except for that. I knew it had to be too good to be true. It looks really nice. C B A K, another one that looks great. But I bet you that's a five cent mover too. C B A K. Yep, S dot five C. It's just these crazy candlesticks like that are just, they're fishy. This is how you get really trapped. I mean, you're going to see these a lot, like these crazy long wick candlesticks day trading um, on a daily. But when you see them all over a chart, that's when you know something's really fishy. And I stay away from those. VBIO. Uh, hmm. I don't love it. But it's right above that 50 and it pulled right back down. So, eh, I don't love it. Life. Uh, another one. It's just that all the way up. I just don't like that huge space in between. <clears throat> so, don't think I'm going to put that one on. KNDI. Man, quite a bunch of these here today that are doing this. Um, so... This one, I might give it one more chance. I might give it a chance because it's right below $8. So if it goes and it breaks $8, then I would use $8 as my stop. So let me just see if I can put an alert there. I'll put it at 801. So I'm going to set an alert at or above $8, right? Um, 8.75 is now the yearly high. You see, that's a big move. Um, so, if it breaks eight dollars, I might risk taking this long using eight dollars as my stop. If it cracks eight dollars, I'm getting the heck out because this thing's super overextended. Um, so, if it breaks eight dollars again, might be worth trying to go long. But um, if it breaks below it, I'm getting the heck out of that. Let me see. K N D I. Let me just make sure that there's nothing fishy over here. Ah, another one that's a five cent mover. Not putting it on, but if you want to put it on, go ahead. Just that's what I'm looking for. I just got to remove it. Won't look at it. S O R L. That one. Let's see. Man, three in a row we had that were the five cent movers. I like this one. I don't like the EMAs, but potential reversal. Uh, let me take a look over here. S O R L. <clears throat> so. There's nothing really fishy other than the EMAs. Um, it's closed above 450, which is nice. So between 450 to five dollars, you're going to see these EMAs. It can get really messy up in here, but until it gets up to that like 483 and the five dollar marker, it could have some good to run, move to room to run. So if you got in, if it breaks above, let's see 450, let's say five. Yeah, let's get rid of that. If it breaks above 455 and you wanted to ride it, I would, you know, if you got in, if it breaks above 455, you get an entry around there. And then once it gets up here, if it starts to pull back, you could try riding through the pullbacks. Um, but, you know, use your 455 as a stop. You know, who knows? This might be a reversal. It might blow through. You got to watch. Uh, so S O R L. F C E L. Nope. Uh, BNTC. Man, there's a lot of these ones today. This is getting crazy. And look at that. 
pulled back. So it closed right below $3 and pulled back right below a uh, half dollar amount, three fifty. So you're going to see three forty six. Want to see it break three dollars? I put a break at above an alert. I'm if there was more, we're not getting the greatest plays here today. They're just some kind of messy ones. Um, so some of these I don't love, um, but you'll see some of these kind of go up and they pull. You'll see this has a tendency of doing this. This might be the end of the run. Who knows? But if it breaks three dollars, I'd maybe risk it. If it broke above three dollars and I got an entry close to three dollars, uh, I might potentially risk riding it up. I'd be careful with three forty-six or that three fifty-ish area. If it breaks below three dollars, this is a potential really nice short. Um, let me take a look over on Interactive Brokers. What is uh, BNTC? All right, it is shortable over there, so that's why I like it. So again, that's the beauty of uh, shorting is that if this thing opens below three dollars and doesn't break, you know this thing could easily pull back to two thirty-seven, two fifty. I'd look around, yeah, right over around here, this two thirty-eight area. Um, this could easily drop down to that area um, <clears throat> right there. That's a kind of a double bottom area. I could easily drop down to that area. So if it breaks, you know, falls below three dollars, boom, it could fall down. And um, again, that's where shorting is awesome. And you can see the availability with uh, Interactive Brokers is really good. MBOT. Uh, you see, it kind of has some drawings on that one. Ideally, you want to see it break above that. Look at that, right there. One, almost 50. 151, it pulled back, right? That 149 area. So obviously, 150 is a big area. Not going to put it on the watch list. Um, but if it breaks 150, that could potentially move. SRRA, that one I like. Something looks a little fishy to me on this with the candles. Uh, yeah, ah, what a mess. Uh, let me take a look. SRRA. All right, so this one is not a five cent mover. It is a little bit crazy. It's approaching the yearly high at 193. So, man, this could be a really amazing breakout. That's almost like an inverse head and shoulder. It's hard to see. You can almost see like a head, a right shoulder, and then if you go over, this could be a long left shoulder. This is almost like a beautiful uh, inverse head and shoulder, like a l big, huge left shoulder, a head, big, huge right shoulder. That neckline at 193, um, man, that would be, that's where I'd want. I'm going to change that to red as the... Uh, huge area of resistance it looks beautiful but i would put the alert and this one i would risk if i could get an entry close to this 182 i would take it and use that as my stop loss in preparation for this to either slam back down off that 193 or this thing could absolutely fly that's a would be a nasty breakout especially if that breaks two dollars that thing could really run um and look at that gap on the weekly from 315 up. So this has some, some really good area to move. It's a really nice setup for a really nice potential breakout pattern. Uh, and you'll see some support right around this. Let's see that 160, 465 area. So SRRA, again, and what I like about it is it's shortable. So if this thing rejects, I could always take it down. Um, SRRA, love it. Love the pattern. A-P-R-I. Love it. So I like this one. Got to close above $2. Whole dollar amount, which I like. Want to see it break above 207 to the high today. Um, create an alert. 207. You can see some resistance right around there. That 250-ish area. So... Um, if you can get an entry close to $2 or 207 ish area, 
write it up. Be careful of the whole dollar, half dollar amount <coughs> of 250 APRI. Let me take a look. Perfect. Looks good. Now we're starting to get some ones that look a little bit nicer. Uh, PRTO. Um, look at that. Huh? Slowly creeping up to that massive gap. Uh, where did it close? 265, pulled back at 277. I don't love it. But, you know, it's one potential swing trade. Be careful. I don't, I, you know, if you were to swing it, I might wait for a pullback down to the 13 EMA. Um, got to watch it. Three green days. Just got to keep an eye on it. VKTX. Look at that. Uh, look at that, huh? Man, oh, man. Uh, so... I don't know. Look at all those traps of those wicks, huh? This is where you can get really trapped when you're not careful. Look at that. Look at all these candles. Traps, traps, traps. Trap, 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 trap. Like all of these are just traps. Um, I was watching it. I don't... But you, like, I was watching this, I think, uh, a couple days ago to see that it shorted over here. And you'll see, it just like it traps people. Like people that want to short it, and then it kind of just snaps right back up. I'm just not... Let me see how many do I have on the 367. I'm not putting it on the watch list. Dries, I can't stand dries. ARLZ. Eh. Nope. DYSL. Look at that, huh? Goodness gracious. Nope. TA. I bet you this is a five cent mover. TA. Yep. S dot five C. These they're so predictable, these fishy candlesticks. L L E X. Nope. O N C S. Nope. I N F I. Nope. C A T B. Nope. A F M D. That's gotta be a five cent mover. A F M D. Yep. S dot five C five cent increments. Look at that. Crazy candlesticks. TTPH. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if I love that. CASC. Yes. I'm going to tell you why I'm excited in a moment. Because I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive. And maybe a lot. Uh, let me put uh, alert above 560. Come on. I'll put the alert right above that five four fifty five. Okay. So I get excited because I ideally like to have uh ideally nine stocks on my watch list every night. I don't like to have more. I'm okay if it's a little bit less. The reason why I like having nine is because I'm super obsessive compulsive. I have nine windows here with thinkorswim, right, for charting. So I like having it on here. And what happens is if I have 11 or 12, I have to, like, try and sort it down to the nine I like. And if I have two or three, like, once I'm in, I have them up on my chart here. I'm, like, super locked in watching these patterns. And what happens is, is sometimes if I have 11 or 12 on there, which I don't like, um, there'll be a couple of them that'll move and I just totally miss it. And those couple that are seem to be like that I'm not watching seem to be ones that like really move a lot and that really ticks me off. Um, so if you wonder, sometimes I really try to be extra picky because I like to have nine. Uh, three, six, seven, eight. Uh, so C-A-S-C, did I put that on here yet? I did. So there's three, six, seven, eight. I have one more play here left, and if not, I'll look at one of the new highs uh, scanners and see if I can find one over there. Um, I don't love that one. So let's see if I can find one more to add on. VHC. <clears throat> I think that was a five. Was that a five cent mover? Do I have this one? What? Huh. Interesting. Why is that one not on my watch list? I think that was a five cent mover. V 
HC. So yeah, that's yeah, it is a five cent one. Um, life. So yeah, I ideally like to have nine on there. That's that's why I'm just a little picky. So it drives me a little bit nuts when I have a little bit more. E. Trying to find one more. T L R A. Did I have that one? Yep, got it over there. So some of these new high ones are end up on the the scanner. A X T I, D R N A. Maybe I'd put that one on. Let me see here. D R N A. Yeah. So the reason why I might put D R N A on there is well, first of all, it's shortable in Thinkorswim, which is nice. Uh, that's really weird. The high of the year is 666. That's pretty bizarre. But it's closed right above 651, so I'd like to see it break <laughs> 666. Um, I'm just going to put the alert at that. But if it, you know, you'll have one, look at these green days here. This is an easy short. So if this breaks, I would say at or below 650 on this, or six, X, at or below 649, I would consider taking that short. Um, let me see here. At or below. If that stays below 650, that could be a nice short. So I'm going to put a line just for myself here. Let me see. What is this right here? 635. I'm going to put an alert, like a line, right? Just so I can see this clearly. So I watch it on my chart. Um, so if it breaks 666, it could be bullish. Um, but if it breaks below 650 and it stays, it could be an easy short and could easily pull back to the 13 right there. <clears throat> so that's a pretty nice short. Ian Thinkorswim has shares to short. So there we go. I'm going to court why I'm ahead. Why I'm ahead. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, again, it's just my OCD. I don't like having nine. I'm probably or more than nine. I'm going to probably kind of change it moving forward. And first of all, you can't. It's hard to watch more than nine stocks anyway. You know, having multiple screens is really, really difficult to watch. So I like. I literally. I kind of I set my screen up where I do a uh, I'll put all the nine in here <clears throat> and I'll have my one minute chart set up and then I'll have uh, all nine in my five minute and I just look at the patterns on the one and the five minute and then I'll have my uh, my account set up over here and I look at level two and time and sales and I just look at the patterns. And then I'll look at support and resistance, look at level two and time and sales and watch the patterns form and obviously go for scalps. Well, that's day trading. Um, if it seems foreign to you, uh, again, it takes lots of practice. And the, the thing we'd absolutely recommend doing is opening a virtual account with Thinkorswim right here, something like this, and making hundreds of practice trades. There's no way around it. I wish there was an easier way, but it's going to take hundreds of practice day, trades showing up on an every single day basis for months, if not a year plus of every single day. Uh, you know, taking our watch list, look at the alerts that we have set up. So we're going to send these alerts. Input these alerts into your brokerage account by just going over to the chart, right clicking wherever the alert area is, clicking on create alert and then putting it at or above whatever level we have. Those alerts will be in your brokerage account, right? And then you can go up to set up application settings. You can go over to notifications and put in your cell phone number and it'll alert you when, um, <clears throat> when, this, when these alerts trigger. So when you see the trigger here, uh, that trigger will go right to your cell phone or to your email. And then you have the charts up and then you decide whether you want to, you know, day trade it or scalp it or, you know, or scalp day trading it, whether you're going to swing trade it. Um, you know, again, most of these stocks are small cap stocks. Many of them, the majority of them are garbage companies. Uh, I just, 
I don't like many of them whatsoever for long-term investments. I'm I'm either day trading them or very short-term swing trading them based upon patterns because you'll see as he as easy as these things can go up, uh, they're very well can crash uh, on the way down. As you can see, like uh, you'll just say, like these things can just move up four dollars down to. Well, that's not too bad. Again, you got to watch the EMAs, but you'll see the ones like what was one today. Oh, CLSN, right? Look at that. So if you got trapped up in here, so let's say, oh, you're like, oh, man, this thing this thing went crazy yesterday. I got to get in on it now. Well, what if you didn't get in on the break of $6? What if you got in or, you know, like, or what if you got in at 608 and you weren't paying attention on a swing trade and you're at work? And look at that thing, 608 down to 380, you know? This thing could go either way. This thing could either crash tomorrow or it can go back up. So this is this is this is what happens with these stocks. You can make a ton of money day trading them, but you got to be careful with them for lo any long-term investments. That's why I don't trust any of them long-term. Uh, so I just day trade them, short-term swing trade. <coughs> so that is the watch list tonight for you guys. Um, if you're new here, I can I'd encourage you to stick around for the next few minutes. I kind of uh, provide some updates, what we do here, what we're all about. Uh, again, we are the Bullish Bears. Uh, that's our company. Um, we call our Facebook community, uh, the group, we call us the stock market community. I do that for specific reasons, just to differentiate our group from our fan page. Our fan page, we just have it as the Bullish Bears. Our group is still the Bullish Bears. We just call it stock market community just to differentiate things. Uh, but again, if you haven't liked our fan page on Facebook, make sure you come over here, like us, and follow us because, uh, number one, we post all of our updates over here on our fan page. But every morning, we do post our trade ideas, pre-market uh, scan movers, uh, which is our live market scanner of choice. Trade Ideas is hands down the best scanner in the industry. Um, so if you're new, if you're on a budget, if you uh, don't have much money, then use our scans, you know, our watch list that we do at night. Uh, we do post uh, Trade Ideas pre-market mover scan right here every morning by 9 a.m. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, use our scans for now. Um, but once you can afford it, you absolutely want to get a live scanner. You want to get trade ideas. It's the best one in the industry because many of the plays that we put on the watch list at night uh, or post in the morning here, something else might be a totally different runner. And if you don't have a live scanner, then you're going to miss huge potential moves. Uh, so trade ideas is the best. Again, use our scans for now, but when you can afford it, uh, we'd appreciate it if you pick it up from us at our referral link over here. And in return, we do get you guys a 15% community discount by entering the code BULLISHBEARS15 in all caps. Um, so trade ideas is the best. Also, Benzinga is a partner of ours. We get you a 25% discount. Benzinga is an incredible tool for live market news. You'll see in the morning here, like I post a picture. Oh, that wasn't it. That was trade ideas. Um, let me see the picture. Huh. Why is that not pit? Well, anyways, you see here when I post a picture here in the morning, um, when you click on it, uh, you'll see these are live market news. So what happens is... Benzinga picks up the live market news. They even have a thing called Squawk on there, which will read out the news to you so you can hear it while you're trading. And it'll say ABC company, you know, news, whether it's positive or negative. And what happens is a lot of the top traders uh, will be listening to uh, Benzinga and they'll hear news, right? So what will happen is they'll go and they'll look, you know, if, if let's say ABC company gets news, they'll immediately pull up the chart for ABC company, and then they'll obviously do their charting. They'll find support and resistance. They'll get their position before it hits the scanner. So they'll obviously, you know, getting live news before it hits a scanner like Trade Ideas, you're already set. You get your position, right? So if ABC company gets some positive news, you get your position right before it hits the scanner. Trade Ideas will then pick up, oh, you know, ABC is moving up on volume. You know, then it starts hitting the scanners, and the more people volume that starts coming in on trade ideas, the more people that start to go in. But you've already gotten the news ahead of time. You've already gotten your position ahead of time due to Benzinga. So Benzinga and trade ideas really complement each other extremely well. Again, they're both pricey. They're about 100 bucks or so a month each. We do get you a discount over here. Um, but again, only, you know, get these tools once you can afford them. Uh, and again, in return, we get you discounts. But, you know, please 
you know, buy trade ideas from us with our discount. And Benzinga, there is no affiliate link. You just go to Benzinga.com and input Bullish Bears 25 in all lowercase with a 25% discount. But again, we're giving you guys a couple hundred dollars a month worth of tools. And you'll see here, this watch list video takes me about 45 minutes to make every single day. Plus, it takes me about another 45 minutes to upload and produce it. So it's about an hour and a half every single day. And we're giving you alert service included on top of it. So... You know, Tim, Dan, and myself, the Bullish Bears, our community, we are not membership-based. We do everything for free for our community. Uh, you know, we have this vision of becoming pretty much the largest trading company in the world, and we ideally want to do it uh, without charging people. And the way we're going to do that, it's probably going to take many years, you know, a few years of just building up a solid base. Uh, and ideally, at some point when we have a big enough base, we ideally want to partner with large companies that would in return pay us uh, to basically pay you guys. So in essence, build up a big enough following where companies would pay us for advertising or something. And in return, rather than passing that charge along to you guys, we, you know, they would be paying us to basically teach you guys full time. Uh, we don't know if that vision is going to work. Um, it's going to take a lot of time, uh, a lot of following, and it takes a few years to do that. So in return, you know, we do rely heavily on the donations of all of our community members. Uh, if you think a lot of people uh, donate to us, so you're going to like, ah, you know, these guys are making a ton of money from donations, so I'm not going to donate, uh, then I would say you're thinking wrong because, uh, you know, as generous as we try to be, uh, a lot of people necessarily aren't as generous in return. Uh, it's just kind of the nature of the beast. Uh, so if you're thinking we're getting a ton of donations, we're not. Um, so we're trying to, you know, we're running on a faith-based model in the sense of uh, having faith in our community that they will continue uh, to donate until we become big enough where we don't have to charge memberships. But we don't know if this model is going to sustain. Uh, we're patient with it enough right now. But down the road, we may become membership-based. So in order for us to not become membership-based and not charge uh, membership fees, it's going to take everybody contributing uh, at least a little bit every month. So if you want to donate to us, we have donation options. Again, if you're like on a budget and you're like, oh, I'd like to donate to you guys, but I don't have the money. I'm still learning trading. Well, the good news is we have donation options for as low as $10, $25 a month. That's a cost of one to two trades per month. Uh, we are absolutely worth at least $50 to $100 a month without question with all of our alert service, our trade room, everything that we offer, all of our courses. Uh, but if you're on a budget, you know, we have for a cost of one to two trades a month, you could donate monthly right over here. Again, don't assume people are uh, donating to us because uh, they're not as, <laughs> we don't get as many contributions or donations as you would believe. So we do need everybody's support. Uh, so the more people that donate, we get a thousand, two thousand people in our group that are donating 10 to $25 a month, then we won't charge membership fees down the road. If we don't get that, then eventually we're going to charge like anybody else because, you know, we're obviously we're a business. So um, if you'd like to donate, our donation button right here for monthly, as well as one-time single donations over here. Um, and if you haven't joined our trade room yet, come join us right over here. We are on Skype. We have over 500 people on there right now. Again, uh, we can easily charge 100 to 150 dollars a month with what we're offering on our watch list and our trade rooms. We're not charging for our trade room, so it's a great place to go over there. Uh, and learn. So currently we are not charging. We ideally would like to keep it that way. And the only way we can keep it um, for free is by everybody's donations. And we leave it in your hands, uh, the amount what, that you would like to donate. Uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to our email service yet, make sure you click on the banner here. Uh, subscribe to our emails, which we send out uh, with our watch list as well as the alerts. So everything I just did in this video, we send out every night by email, as well as we send out the trade ideas movers as well. So we're giving lots of content in a way for free. Uh, so make sure you take advantage of it. As well as speaking of free, we have lots of uh, training over here. Take our trading courses. That's a couple thousand dollars worth of trading. Um, we have some great merchandise. If you like my hat, our logos, our Hope is Real slogan, uh, you can visit our merchandise store over here. You'll see Hope is Real. We got hats, zip-up, hoodies, mugs, gifts, ladies' apparel, kids' apparel. We have lots of great stuff, so uh, make sure you visit our store. Um, our Twitter, make sure you follow us on Twitter over here, Bullish Bears, as well as uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the notification bell. Like 
bell, uh, like our videos, um, share them, comment on, uh, comment on them. We try to be very uh, interactive. So, again, hopefully these videos are helpful for you guys, and uh, happy trading tomorrow. Enjoy.